Welcome to Should You Summon. How the heck are you, everybody? I am Fastidious. What am I talking about? What banner? I mean, it's Saturday. Why am I releasing a, a Should You Summon and the Ass Cracky and the Necky IO of the night, aka the morning, before this banner? Well, because it's a really interesting, weird one, and it's a, a pattern, something they've been doing a lot lately, where they're rerunning old banners that were like rare and uh, sacred banner 15Xs, and then they're just I said sacred. I made that mistake earlier on stream. Divine. I had a crazy day, guys. I'm talking legendary summoning crystals. Basically, they're rerunning former banners that were 15Xs both on rare summoning crystals and legendary summoning crystals. And they're doing it as like a one or two day event starting on Sunday, sometimes also lasting into Monday, where you can just from the gold summons, just from the legendary summoning crystals, the divine banner, they'll, they'll rerun that old banner. So I think, I want to say it's like two and a half months ago, between two and four months ago though, we had our first ever Comet banner and it came with a brand new hero, Edith. Obviously Edith's been out for a little while now. Comet is a total OG of the game. And this was a big banner, right? Comet is to this day, a completely goaded S plus mage in Watcher of Realms. Everyone kind of went hard on it that didn't have Comet and was trying to snag a Comet. We thought Edith was useless. Actually, she's not. She's incredible for gear eight five, kind of only that. But it, it turned out to be a pretty dang good banner, even better than we thought it was gonna be. So of course they're like, let's make some money. They're running it back as a Sunday, Monday only banner, divines only, legendary summoning crystals only. And let me tell you, a large portion of people should 100% be summoning on this. Full stop, it has nothing to do with, you know, you might be thinking, but Destin said Lust is coming. Don't worry, Lust is not available with Legendary Summoning Crystals, Divine Summoning Crystals. That will be a guaranteed 250 exclusive banner. So all the info from the Leak Boys doesn't matter because that's a different summoning currency. This is just your gold Legendary Summoning Crystals. So if you've got them, I'm going to tell you if you are the kind of person that needs to be using them on this banner. Let's get into it. But first, guys, if you are once again looking to get your pay to win on and do a little spending this weekend, it's probably best to save some money and get some free bonus rewards while you do so. This video is sponsored by Smile One, the official third party payment platform for Watcher of Realms. They offer long term 10% discounts on all W Gold purchases, and on top of that, they are running a special top up event from July 26th to July 29th. These Smile One deals are currently only available in the following regions Russia, the United States, the EU, Indonesia, the Philippines, Taiwan, Korea, and Hong Kong. As always, guys, I am not telling you to spend. What I am saying is, if you are already planning to do so, use my link to save money with discounted rates and get bonus top up rewards for free. And of course, by using my link, you will be supporting me while doing so. So, be sure to use my exclusive link in the description of this video and the top pinned comment. Thank you, Smile One, for sponsoring this video. Fastidious. Fastidious. I don't want to waste your time, guys. Let's get right into it. We don't have to do full kit breakdowns. Let's start with the star of the show. Obviously, it is Comet. Full stop. It is Comet. This guy is completely goaded. You might be wondering why. Like, some people, I think, don't understand how Comet could even hit as hard as he can, so they just assume he doesn't hit as hard as he does. Let me explain to you why that is. The first thing comes from his talent, Obliteration Strike. Deals 400% extra high damage to enemies who have not been attacked. I don't know what high damage means, but like when a obliteration strike comes on his initial hits against enemies, or as you'll see from, I believe it is over here, uh, Curse of Obliteration, his, his first passive, every seven attacks going down to five attacks, uh, he's gonna place Curse, and then also next attack against a target with Curse is going to do Obliteration Strike. When this triggers, it ain't 400% extra damage. I don't know what it is, but it's clearly a huge, giant chunk of damage. It reminds me of the pre-nerf version of Boreas when he would do his massive damage and they didn't tell us the amount uh, from whatever it is, Icy Obliteration or Frozen Pure purification is and now i got now we got to go find out sorry i'll go really fast and then we'll already be in the we'll already be in the the mages so it's fine uh whatever the boreas thing was called which i'm going to find for you right now let's go find it here it is uh his eternal ice haven uh now you can say it deals damage ranging from 300 to 900 based on the freeze duration so it can obviously max out uh up to uh what is it up to a duration of three seconds so you're going from 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.53 this is not about Boreas. The point is, now it's all specific. They tell you when it maxes out. They tell you 300 to 900. But before, it was just massive. 
With Comet, we're definitely still getting some funkiness like that. Hey, I brought it home. With Comet, with the high damage, it's this extra high. It's not normal damage, and it's crazy. So basically, occasionally he does this insane burst that is so potent, right? But why does that make him such a good mage? It's not like he's got some crazy AoE. Well, he really does, and that's the weird thing about him, his kit. So he's got this passive here, Infernal Plague. Upon killing a target, the hero's attack will bounce off two enemies, dealing 120% magic damage. This obviously is going to increase opportunities uh, to place curse and then to trigger obliteration strike. So it's really strong. But then he's like single target or I guess multi-target. It's a two enemy hitter on the basic. So how does this all add up to him being like a good argument for the best AoE mage in the game? Certainly the best like normal uh, legendary that is a AoE mage in the game. Why is he such an S plus? Well, just the way it all comes together and then you combine it with the ultimate, which is each attack for the duration is now dealing 320% AOE damage lasting for 15 seconds, goes up to 20 seconds. How does that all come together? Basically, he's got all these crazy multipliers very much driven by the 400% extra high damage that leads to him performing the DPS of like, a, I shouldn't say Serafina because she can hit crazy high things potentially, but like a normal, good, legendary single target mage but because they slide this in on his ultimate that actually you're getting AOE, because you have the jumps after deaths, because uh, you actually have double hitters on the basic, it whole thing turns into him being a proper AOE ma mage, a proper AOE magic DPS with kind of the multiplier treatment, right? And even the base stat treatment, because he's over 4,600, he's not at like 40... 300 like some of the other ones will get or 44 4500 he's getting that whole treatment of a single target mage uh so basically it kind of is like not as potent but to me the equivalent i don't even ever think i've said this in a video or a stream before he's kind of like the magic version of hot sit hot sit gets like the single target marksman treatment but oh by the way yeah it's only up to five targets but her aoe burst on her ultimate is so stupid strong it's insane kind of similar with comet not at the levels of hot sit but one less. I mean, Hot Sit, we're calling triple S. I would say Comet is on the fringe because he is so, so good at hitting so hard and having so much burst. So he's treated as a burst hero, but he effectively is an AoE hero and it's nuts. And let me just tell you, I can leave it at that. If you do not have a good AoE magic DPS, you're not gonna do better than Comet. I mean, we're actually right here so I can show you. You've got someone like Soul Cadence who technically has little AoE. You have someone like Twin Fiend who technically is AoE, right? But they're really all about single target, focusing up, channeling and obliterating one thing, maybe really hurting things to the side. So just because they're Legendary Lords, don't think they're better. Morgan, straight up AoE Legendary Lord, so much worse, worse for DPS than Comet. Lasir is much more of a debuffer control, same for Shamir. Ajax can be fantastic with tons of awakenings and is exclusive. And even with all that for like non PVP content, he's just so worse than Comet. It just, this is just kind of how it goes. With Virna, worse than Comet. Does she have cool things? And as a hero, as a character that then empowers Silas, might she be more valuable? Perhaps you could argue it. But if you're just talking about, hey, I need to drop an AoE mage, it's Comet. Any content that you cannot freeze people, Comet is a mile better than Boreas. And since Boreas is nerf, I'd say they're kind of, it's kind of a wash if Boreas is able to get his freezes out. Demi can hit insanely hard, but only during her ult. It's not strong enough. And then we just got tons and tons of single target. You've got someone like Dahlia or Ingrid. Maybe I'd say Ingrid at her max potential an A3 Ingrid would just be straight up better. Even a, even a zero if you build her really nice, you got her in the right comp, especially if she is a watcher lord. But you know, it's not as easy to use and because she doesn't have bursts that you can manually trigger or something, I actually think for most PVE content, Comet would be the choice. Anora, she can't even get buffed. She can't get set bonuses. I think it's obviously gonna be Comet. Uh, Dahlia, fantastic, but that range limits her. And then we've got a bunch of single target stuff. You guys can kind of see it. Comet is our AOE magic nuke in this game. He is the pinnacle. So I will say, why shouldn't you go for him? Well, if you already have him, don't go for him. I will say his A3 is fantastic to expand his range. There is a bug in it that other heroes like Twin Fiend or something or Soul Cadence, if someone's in what would be their ultimate range, but they're not ulting, you can still trigger the ultimate. That doesn't work for Comet A3. Moonton, if you're watching that, fix that. Also guys, if you love Comet, just complain about that to Moonton. That's a good idea because obviously that's how it should work. It works like that for Cetrum. You know, people, anyone that expands their ultimate range, you should be able to trigger the ultimate if there is a hero in that hypothetical range that could come. Comet doesn't get that. All, all being said though, you know, the Infernal Plague extra bounce is great, the triple bouncer. 
Is it needed? Kind of no, he's so good at A0. So if you don't have him, I think you can definitely go for him and many of you 100% should go for him. Why wouldn't you go for him? You already have him and you kind of don't want to go into awakenings. You're not any kind of dolphin, whale, kraken content creator. Uh, the other key things I would basically say is if you do have like a Mirna and a Boreas, unless you kind of want to truly min max everything and maybe you're a big spender or something, you're kind of having it covered. You know, Virna can handle things well enough when you can't freeze stuff. And when you can freeze stuff, you'll take full advantage of Boreas and he'll be better than Virna, right? If you don't have those two, you know, and maybe you didn't get lucky to snag a Demi and you don't have this roster of AoE Magic DPS, Comet is your guy. That is the magic nuke. He's the best in the biz for a reason. And full stop, I can end it there. Comet is that stupid freaking good. That is your boy Comet. So who's the other chick on the banner? This will take me all of two seconds, quite literally. So let me just put any semblance of gear on her. I'll do it live, it doesn't matter. Go to Gear Dungeon 2. Uh, thank God the keys just reset. Let's just make make sure Edith is wearing anything. Uh, let's do a quick equip here. Uh, all you need to know about Edith is this. There is a fight uh, called Gear Dungeon 2, AKA what I call Gear Aid 5. Uh, that's background battle that is useless to us right now. <laughs> um, let's turn that off so you can actually watch. And in this fight, there's this awful Banshee phantom guy that becomes this spirit, and then she explodes and deals crazy damage, and after a certain point, guaranteed fatal damage to anyone in range. How do you deal with that? Well, you can tank it with like an unyielding hero, or you can do this that you're about to see right now. So I'll just actually take over for one second. You see, we will get the kill. Might take a while, I don't know if Artie is wearing gear. Looks like we're getting some crits. Throw us on one X. You just push the guy out of the way. Simple as that. He's got like basically two tile range in a circle around him. Wouldn't it be easy if we just push him away? So trigger Edith. She's got two times strength knockback twice at the start of her ultimate. And now you can see the shimmers of the radiation. Not going to reach. Simple as that. It, it literally is. That's Edith for you, right? She's a completely acceptable defense based tank. It is what it is. Well, let's wait for the explosion. Nothing happens because Edith pushed it out of the way. There's no one in the game that does it as well as Edith. Can other heroes do it? Actually, yes, Borit, a rare Watcher Lord, can do it. Cyclone, it takes a little bit, but Cyclone can do it. You do have other options. However, Edith is the easiest spy mile and she is the best spy mile. I will say you also don't even need to do pushback. You could bring Broke here, or if you don't have Broke here, you could bring Baron and just have them tank it one time by dying, right? And they could die unyielding effect. The only downside is that means at the very beginning of the battle, you'll have to deploy someone to quickly kill the Banshee when they come. What is it? What are they actually called? Tortured Banshee or something like that. I used to know the names of every single one of these, these little fools. Tormented, not tortured. Tormented Banshee. Uh, you can just tank that one time because you can't get fatal damage if you have an unyielding effect on yourself. So you tank it the one time. The only stipulation is at the beginning of the fight, the way I do is like with Wrath. You can just have someone quickly solo kill her and absorb that and then die. So that means you're gonna have one more death throughout the battle, which obviously can be kind of nasty in this fight. Because as you can see here, where is the uh, explanation of this? Basically every time you retreat someone or someone dies, here you go, Sacred Blood Siphon. The frenzied blood mistress, AKA Volka, draws blood from her defeated or retreated, I like that that rhymes, uh, heroes to significantly enhance her own attack. So that's one more instance of retreat or defeat that is going to buffer attack. It makes the fight that much harder. That being said, I've probably done at least a dozen takeovers using the Baron or the Brokeer strat. So you do not need Edith, but she makes it so much easier, especially if you're not in like the top, top gear department. She'll be huge for progression for any normal account that isn't at the level yet to reach stage 10. So I do think she's a nice consolation prize if you don't have it. That being said, she has some of the most useless awakenings in the entire game. Uh, so getting extra copies of her is a bummer. So if you already have Comet, already have Edith, obviously I think you should just skip it. Uh, but if you don't have Comet and you are in need of AoE Magic DPS, I think you absolutely go for it, full stop. And then I will say if you have Comet, but maybe you're keen on Awakenings and you're feeling lazy or you feel like your gear's not fully there, you kind of might want to go for Edith. That's kind of where we can leave it, guys. That's what I'm going to say. I basically think if you have any big spending habits, you kind of can do as you please. And if you're lower and you're progressing through the game and you are hankering for a big AoE DPS, you will not find a better one than Comet. He's pretty darn rare too, so I, I hope if you do go for him, you are able to snag him, but do not expect you will go for him, right? His rate's gonna come in in rare bucket at about 20 to 22%. Edith is gonna come in at about 28 to 30%. Uh, so altogether, you have about a 30% chance to get one or the other. There you go, guys. There you have it. That was my one take, but actually two take attempt at doing a should you summon video. I really, really hope you did enjoy it. 
Uh, like I said, the epic challenge is coming pretty darn soon. Also, did I even say that? I don't think I even said that. I think that was in a different thing I filmed earlier. Let me say that. When this comes out, the epic challenge will be starting in hours. It starts at reset on August the 24th. From when I'm filming this, it is starting in five hours and 10 minutes from when you see this, maybe it will be, I don't know, three hours and 10 minutes, something like that. I really hope to see you participating. We've got almost 30 content creators signed on. Gonna be a blast. This has been Should You Summon. I've been Fastidious. Share with your mother and I'll see you real soon. Bye. Fastidious.